Hello guys, and this is episode 7 of the Whips Nation podcast. I'm your host Alex, and our guest today is Whip Snake's face-off specialist and two-time PLL champion Joe Nardella. Joe played a key role with the returning PLL champions, leading the league in face-off wins at 100, winning 72% of his face-offs, and dominated ground balls with 65 on the year. It's going to be a good one, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Whips Nation here on the podcast. We got Joe Nardella. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk shop and uh, see what we dive into today. Of course. So kind of kicking us off, um, you guys are playing a full season with fans. How excited are you for that? I think it's, you know, just another step on the return to return to normalcy for sports. And I think the PL did a great job being, you know, one of the first leagues to get athletes back on the field. And this this season should be no different in terms of them really pushing the limits in terms of what we can get for live fans to watch. So I'm really excited to play in front of crowds again. That's something I missed the most in 2020. I know that's a huge part of our game and the growth of it. So I'm really excited to give people the opportunity to watch watch our sport, especially at the highest level with both leagues combining this past year and uh, and really seeing what lacrosse is all about at the pro level. Definitely. Now, with that, in your position specifically, you're having to adapt almost yearly at this point to new rules, regulations. Um, I had a special question come in from Jason Anderson, who's one of our face-off coaches. And his question was, what is your routine as you walk out to each face-off from a mental focus and and also a technical standpoint? So technique wise, you're really hoping that you've done enough training that you don't have to think too much when you're out there because when you think you're slow, when you're slow, you're not winning. Um, I think the biggest thing is just being focused and and realizing that only in your mind are two face-offs connected, right? What happened last time has nothing to do with this next one. It's an independent new rep. And for me, it's just really taking a couple deep breaths, kind of visualizing what I want to happen um, and then going out there, listening to the whistle and executing. So how much of face-offs at the pro level is, you know, rock, paper, scissors, always doing this move, so I know how to counter them this way? Or is it more of just, you know, two guys um, being super gritty to try to get the ball? I think it's a little bit of both, but I, I mean, I would say it's really a matter of who's hearing, reacting to, and anticipating the whistle the best, because mm-hmm. that guy's going to have a huge advantage. And with all things equal, that's where technique kind of comes into play. Angles, speed, power, um, those two things really just play the main factors. So for me, it's really getting a clean cut into the ball with like a straight line motion, no wasted movement, and trying to be as efficient as possible with my actual clamp motion as I go to make that move at the ball. And then obviously being quicker than your opponent is what can help you win face-offs both cleanly or, you know, having kind of that strategy mindset of what to do next and drilling and repping, like how to just kind of get into your second move or react to what just happened with that like half a second contact time of the sticks and how you play out of those situations. So I think it's all those things kind of encompassed into one. So what are some things our listeners can do you know, at home by themselves to get their reaction speed up and sort of help them at the X. The first one is just being mindful and listening to whistles while kind of focusing on your breathing, taking a deep breath in on down, breathing out before set. And then there's so many online resources on YouTube, Instagram, et cetera. I would dive into watching as many face-offs as possible because every time you take a face-off, it's a physical and a mental rep. You can only take so many physical reps, but you can always take mental reps and see what other guys are doing and try to kind of formulate your own game plan in your head of what you're trying to do out there. And that certainly helps as guys watch and learn from others who are better, more experienced than them to kind of hone in on their craft and kind of focus, figure out and focus on what they should be doing. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. So for a guy like you, I mean, you're pretty busy. Would you agree? I would agree. Yeah. So you, um, you started face off factory, correct? Correct. We're in year five. We're kind year of five. phasing out of startup. So explain to me like I'm five, what is Face Off Factory? So Face Off Factory is a program where we try to provide weekly instruction to as many like regional areas as possible. The form of like drill work, 
with technical focus and then live repetition with like film feedback, live instruction. Um, and we try to get kids better at facing off kind of in a trial by combat sense. And then on a larger big picture scale, we take these mini events we do weekly, we kind of expand it out, enhance the curriculum, like extend the session and try to give kids all over the country access to two to three hours with guys on our staff and to get a little bit more than just a bite like they would at some of the weekly sessions in just an hour or two and then kind of blowing it up we do events as well and we're kind of phasing into like helping kids get recruited is that most of our you know young students their goal is to play in college right so we have an, an overnight camp we have what's called the face-off summit where we're having recruiting opportunities we're partnered up with the kansas city 80 for like a middle of the map showdown wow. in front of college coaches and then we just launched a mile high showdown um where we're having a lot of west coast coaches out to the event to kind of bridge the gap for West Coast players and West Coast colleges who feel like they have to come east to get exposure. We want to just develop like a live in-person pipeline for them. Um, and I think that's something like a huge value add to a lot of our athletes. But basically we try to help kids learn the face-off, master the face-off, get recruited or excel on high school at the face-off and try to provide instruction all over the country. That's huge. That's that's so big for us on the West Coast. Me being in Arizona, lacrosse is obviously not as big of a hotbed as, you know, a Maryland or New York. So um, five years ago when you started Face Off Factory, what did you envision? I mean, did you see it becoming as big as it is today? Did you imagine it being bigger? What were your expectations? I didn't really have any. I just wanted to help kind of coach kids. And I saw a real opportunity in Massachusetts where you have this huge emerging market um, of very competitive high school leagues where every kid and every team wants an edge. So without a real face off instructor in the area, it was a natural fit to kind of start up here as I was coaching um, college across at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And it slowly but surely just grew into like guys who were really hungry to learn kind of teaming up, getting together, together, realizing like there's a kind of a fraternity feel or a little brotherhood with right. the guys you train with and like a mutual respect. And then, you know, we start getting kids from other ages, people telling friends. And next thing you know, you fast forward, you know, four or five years, our smallest like session when we first started was only two kids. And now like that same Monday evening slot, like we've had as many as 60 pre-pandemic, wow. which is pretty neat to see just how much the interest has grown and how many kids love lacrosse and are trying to get better at face-off to make themselves more desirable for college coaches. So things slowed down quite a bit during the pandemic. How did you adapt to that? So we actually did a, a ton of virtual training. I was yeah. coaching on my computer probably from March to September and, you know, still do. Like I told you, I have a virtual lesson today because kids yep. in areas that are like not able to reach coaches in person facing off is a great like great skill set to practice on your own because a lot of it is just being comfortable with what you're doing and if you can excel at mastering the basics you can find a lot of success so that's something we still do today but we flipped the script we were doing two sessions a week um in terms of like group training we did a virtual camp where we mixed in film study some workout stuff like we try to be as creative as possible with it and um i think we did a great job of, of getting kids you know kind of set on board with standing neutral grip and really teaching them from the ground up even through a computer lens wow so in addition to Face Off Factory, which we've already discussed, you're pretty busy with that. I understand that you've recently got into real estate. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I work for Compass in Boston. Um, okay. Compass is a company that has, you know, quite a few locations around the country where they have hubs of offices in many major cities. They're really a tech firm. They actually just went public. Um, within the past few weeks, which is pretty exciting. Um, the scale of like the business they do is huge and like their platform is so user friendly. Like I feel like we're definitely in a digital era. You see yeah. it if like you follow any finance or stock stuff, a lot of the tech companies continue to climb, uh, even though people like kind of predict that they won't. Right. But I think Compass being a tech company is super cool for me because like when I'm pitching 
you know, the idea of buying houses or helping people find like leasing opportunities, them being able to do so and like collaborate on a mobile platform makes th like me feel like I'm ahead of the game. I'm up with the times and that like I can give them, you know, resources they, they wouldn't have access to otherwise. And I work for like a great group called the movement group. And it's a, a few guys that are, you know, a little bit older than I am. So I'm learning a ton, not only about <laughs> about real estate but business entrepreneurship networking all that good stuff and i think i'm in a great area to do it and it's been a lot of fun and like a cool little journey that started as just like a COVID idea when i didn't i had a little bit more time on my hands like hey i'm gonna study and take this test to getting an opportunity to work with some really great people and it's been a ton of fun ton of fun so far so what makes real estate so interesting as an investment as opposed to stocks well, you're going to pay for your living expenses anyway, right? Yep. You have to have a roof over your head. So rather than having all of your money in stocks, you could put your money in real estate where most of the time it's going to appreciate depending on like where you buy. And there's plenty of markets in Boston. Like you see year over year, they're seven to 10% climb in the value, wow. value of their houses. And you know, as recently as the past few months, like houses continue to climb and sell for over ask because people are trying to move out of cities mm -hmm. and move to the suburbs. So we've seen the suburbs are like insanely hot in that, you know, anytime that you're looking at a property that comes on on a Thursday, yeah. they're doing like an open house Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, the house is sold by Monday, Jeez. right? Yeah, right. multiple offers, multiple over ask. Um, and it's kind of a crazy wild um, trend we're in right now with housing. But what I think makes it cool is no two places are the same. And like everybody wants a place to call home. So like finding people to find like a place that they're super comfortable and excited about is like a really yeah. cool, neat experience to like help somebody attain or help somebody's family attain. And that's like why I enjoy it, doing it. It's like another avenue to help people and like still kind of run your own business and be entrepreneurial. No, oh, definitely. And that's and that's kind of the way I view real estate as well. I mean, I don't know how much you know about the Arizona market, but it's absolutely booming. And it's just as you said, house goes on sale Thursday, they're under contract by Sunday. I mean, right. getting multiple full price offers on the first day of the open house. I mean, it's absolutely crazy here. Um, kind of, oh, sorry about that. It's my dog. Yeah, he, uh, he heard something outside kind of shifting gears. Um, back in college days, uh, you were a bit of a gamer. I saw that you were pretty good at FIFA back in the day. Um, do you still pick up the pick up the sticks and play FIFA? I pick up the sticks and play a lot of stuff. I think that's one of the things is like a face off guy, believe it or not, like it keeps my hands hot, I like to say. And like, you know, I've gone as far as like, even at last year, like being able to play before games cause we were in a bubble and like had our stuff in the hotel room. Like I felt like I was dialed in and it like wakes me up. But yeah, I mostly play NHL and Fortnite right now. I, I don't know why, but I, I do really like Fortnite. I just like the nuance of it is so interesting. And like how to be good is so difficult and challenging and competitive. And like you can learn so much from playing with good players and like a lot of the kids I coach play. So it's like pretty cool that like, <laughs> you know, some of my college guys will, will like talk about their games on Xbox or like with my brother, like I'll talk about, you know, all things life related as we play NHL, but I'll dabble with Madden, NBA, FIFA, um, like any sports game I'm with it. Call of Duty a little bit. I still flick on Halo every once in a while. I've played Casey Powell lacrosse. Rocket League, like you name it, I've probably played it. Um, I've always been super competitive about everything. So it's like an easy way for me to plug in like 15, 20 minutes at a clip and just like feel like I have to win or nothing else in the world matters. Um, so yeah, I have a ton of fun with it. It's like an awesome thing to do with your friends, even when you're like, you guys are spread out. So PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. Attaboy. I actually just bought a um, a PC for work that has gaming capabilities. So if and when I can get my hands on a graphic card, because the re like people are buying them and reselling them right now for double the price. It's like the graphics card would cost more than the the custom computer did. But I'm oh, buying 100%. up to that. So right for like, go ahead. Yeah. So they're also using them for cri uh, mining cryptocurrency as well which doesn't help the the graphics card market because I built my PC about 
um six months ago right before like the huge demand for cryptocurrency yeah and even then it, we i was still trying to deal with scalpers and all kinds of just crazy stuff to try it's to get nuts, one. It's, right? it's, dude i got put on um uh i like followed this this twitter account that posted like live alerts as soon as like stock hit the shelves for like best buy and that's how i was able to get one um i'll message you after this if you're still interested yeah but i definitely am because it's it's a challenge and like it's hard to you know my birthday is coming up i thought it'd be a cool work expenditure not only for like you know video creation and like my right. face factory online subscription platform like i'm continuing to get better at editing so i want to have like a, a computer separate from my laptop to do all that stuff on i mean i'm sure you know all about it you're right. creating content all yeah. the time um but yeah like the graphics card is just a huge thorn in my th side of my Dude, thorn in my side right now yeah i hear you man it's 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 a supply and demand thing and right now demand is through the roof but you could go on ebay and buy one for like three four x msrp and it's just like you don't want to pay scalper prices so i understand that. no it's, it's yeah, crazy absolutely. Um, so you mentioned content creation. So do you make all that content for face off factory or do you have a team that helps you out? How does that work? Oh God, no, I can not keep up. With okay. it. Like, <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, you, like dude. now we're in the game of like posting college stuff all the time. So like right. me being able to like actually break it down and add like, you know, a little flair for like our, yep. our subscription platform. Like that's difficult in itself to like film drills to do that to like break down slow motions from our sessions like i'm doing a lot every week already and most of like my focus needs to be on like the input of like how to teach and implement what we're watching right so i actually have a team my partner does a lot of my ops admin marketing stuff um we have two interns one's like actually a college cross coaching graduate student on the women's side and she helps like break down games so she's super familiar with like film and all that good oh, stuff nice. which is cool and then i have like a marketing intern who is actually off this year from school and he's great and he does a ton of stuff and like helps me with personal branding as well so he's pretty dialed in and like i coach him up he comes to my sessions he's one of the face off factory students so on wow. all three fronts i have a pretty reasonable amount of help that we can stay on top of it and be pushing stuff out on a very regular basis nice so with face off yeah. factory it's almost like you've cut, sort of created like your own like face off fraternity if you will um what's that what's that relationship like with you and the other face off factory coaches and how do you determine like who to bring on yeah, so you know a lot of guys i'd say are mo the most amount of guys we have are like mm -hmm. in my draft class like personal friends of mine that i've competed against like mm -hmm. kevin reesman you know we played against yep. each other in pros tyler barbridge we played against each other in college casey dad and i didn't go up against each other but like you know he was always like in the top 10 for face off rankings like mm -hmm. and i did pretty well as well so like i knew who he was so like those the four of us are all 2015 grads and then max adler i actually coached when he was at Bentley oh, wow. um, and okay. he's 2017 so like he's a little younger Noah Rack just happened to like go to UMass and be up here and did really well so we reached out to him um, and he was interested in like you know he's been great because he's in New England so him and I get to like team up on a lot of different stuff um, Andrew Bracey's from upstate New York he's also like my age he graduated in 15 I'm trying to think of who else we got Michael Marino, he uh, graduated from Colorado Mesa. I coached him out in California, like when he was in high school. So that's like wow. a cool, cool circle story. Yeah, Hunter Forbes and I were on the Atlanta Blaze together. Um, so we grabbed him. Like there's just been a bunch of cool connections that have worked out. Like another one, Drew Simino, like now moved to Syracuse where my parents are from. And like, we just kind of got connected to practice together when I was home. So like stuff like that has been super cool to see and like yeah it certainly has developed into like that type of fraternity where we really look forward to like going and coaching together and just kind of feed off each other's energy and like really enjoy bringing the best possible instruction to these kids and giving them stuff that like we wish it, that we could have had growing up and just giving them such an advantage on like the competition that they're going to be going against so it's pretty cool and the other one I forgot is Chris May. He's also 2015 grad. Um, oh, nice. I played against him when he was at Georgetown. And then he did his fifth year at Ohio State. So, like, I got to play against him in the first year of the Big Ten, too, when we switched from the Big East to the Big Ten. So, like, most of the guys I've played against, it's kind of wild. 
That is cool. 2015 grad too, by the way. Um, nice. The uh, the logo redesign for Face Off Factory. I didn't. I, I don't know if I told you or not, but I love it. It looks really. It looks really good. It's super sleek. I really like the uh, the change. So I was thinking about that because we <laughs> haven't like changed it up on the website. Right. Yet. Right. Um, I, I mean, like I it, dude. I like it for social media. It's yeah. definitely like more modern and like yep. sleeker for sure. Right. Like that logo we had mocked up, you know, years ago now, and I think. It's always just like a sign of like showing your customers we're not like abandoning the past, but like we're here to continue to grow and like this is like a new part of like the new phase of what we're doing. You know, right. it really goes hand in hand with like all those satellite locations where we're running sessions mm -hmm. and my coaches are doing a great job on the ground. So we wanted to just kind of mix it up and provide something that was like interchangeable um, from a color scheme perspective so that like each market kind of has their own little, you know, flair to it. Yeah. So how excited are you uh, coming up on camp here in about, you know, 20 or so days? I'm fired up. So, you know, I've been like in preseason, <laughs> me and my strength coach joke about it since really the season ended because I thought I was going to play box normally. Right. And then we thought it was going to be at the end of December for training camp. And then we thought it was going to be in April. Right. So like I was prepping for NLL, like in season phase of my workouts. Then like, all right, we'll go like prep in season phase like when we got the bump back to december and then right. like to april we did it all of like for like a three month progression right and now you know i've kind of been almost near preseason mode i've just been like ramping up my face off rep volume in terms of practice there like hopping mm -hmm. in with my kids every session to take as many draws and hear as many whistles as possible um but other than that like physically i feel like you know i'm i'm testing faster with my speed um higher with my jumping and like stronger with my strength numbers um and my weights like you know a little bit up which is pretty good like nice. i think all around they've done a really good job preparing me and like i've committed just to like the nutrition side of things of like being a chef at home um so like all those things put together like i feel great and fired up to play smack some teams around with the wind snakes that's right baby that's right hey i mean that's what they say is you know those who stay ready don't have to get ready you know what i mean that's right so like i yeah i felt like i've been ready for a while i'm just <laughs> excited to play some games it's been cool though like the group i work out with there's several mm -hmm. other athletes like we have two you know women that are training for team usa they're local college coaches wow. we have a ton of college athletes like starting to come back or like didn't go to school this semester that are around like division one players um and then other local pros like will jump in and come and join us like we've been playing uh like three by you know like with a tennis ball or yep. real sticks and like mini nets and that's honestly been like an awesome skill development i think for like us mixing 30 minutes like an hour at the end of sessions like just getting in tight touches, learning to handle again, reading posture, like all that stuff. So like, it's been so much fun. Yeah. Especially if y'all are using tennis balls too, you have to have real soft hands to get those, especially for those exactly. in tight passes. Oh, it's nuts. And like, I feel like, you know, as the more we play, the better we all get the balls on the ground less, but like day one, you're absolutely right. Like the tennis ball is not forgiving on ground balls. Like, catching like you gotta make sure you watch the ball and like it's really good skill wise to work on i would encourage all young kids to, to do some tennis ball work for their hand eye yeah anytime i bring out the tennis balls for like my one-on-one -on -one lessons the guy's just like oh because they know you yeah, know it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a little more frustrating for sure but it's a it good is. thing to like put your it's a good situation to put yourself in Oh, for sure. Especially like if you warm up for like five minutes with a tennis ball and then switch to a real ball, that real ball is oh, going to feel, feel like, like it's man. like 30 pounds. Yeah, it's, seriously. That's right. Um, so you mentioned cooking in the kitchen. So is that like a new <laughs> skill that you started to develop? What's your go-to recipe? Um, I mean, I would say my go-to is chicken parm. I have a pretty good sauce Ooh, okay. that my grandma taught me how to make. My dad's like my great grandmother was from like first generation from Italy. Like my grandfather actually was born there. So they like we used to do pasta Sunday, my grandma's a lot. So I've kind of like mixed in my love for chicken parm with that. We have an air fryer, so I go air fried chicken parm. Nice. With, yeah, some nice sauce and I'll get like you know good healthy pasta most of the time whether it be like whole wheat or some mm -hmm. of the gluten-free stuff like red lentil like that stuff i love um so i'd say that's go-to normally i'm making like i'll either do like italian themed or i'll go like soy and sriracha with whatever i'm making speaking of i had something in the <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
dude. Uh, yeah, that, usually it's like that. The uh, the air fryer is a game changer, eh? Oh, it's the best. It seriously is. I I got one um, from Costco about two months ago, and I'm wondering now like why I've never just always had one. It, dude, they're incredible. Oh, they're incredible. It's just like a time efficiency safe where it's the best. Are there any good um, like websites that you go to for air fryer recipes? Honestly, wing it a lot. With my Do you? Stuff. Like, yeah, it's like eh, nine like, minutes sounds good type of thing, and then like you pull it out. Yeah, and... I'll check it. I mean, I'm pretty attentive. Like, luckily, I can work from home a lot of the time for both sure. my jobs. So, like when I'm here midday, like if I want to make chicken wings, like I'll look up like a sauce <laughs> recipe. But like I have a pretty good pulse on things I want to try because I'm always like trying new stuff when I'm out or when I'm traveling and like one cool part about like playing lacrosse is I'm still traveling around a lot right. and then like coaching you know I'm usually on the road twice a month so like next week and after I go to Austin Texas I'll probably like want to mix and mash for some barbecue themed stuff Ooh, nice right so yeah, I look up random recipes here and there to answer your question I don't have like one site but there's you know stuff everywhere Sure. All right. So to, to wrap things up and to make sure that you get to your lesson on time, um, <laughs> yesterday was May the 4th. Okay. It's basically like the fans unofficial Star Wars day. Today is technically Revenge of the Fifth. Okay. So I'm going to have you um, list off your uh, top three favorite uh, Star Wars movies. Top three. I honestly don't think I ever watched like all the Star Wars movies. Like, really? Wow. Time. Yeah, so you're gonna have to give me another question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw that you uh, that you appreciated that edit for Star Wars. I Day. do. I've seen a bunch of them. Uh huh. Like I just don't remember the names. I was young when a lot of the original ones came out. Yeah, true. Yeah, cause um, yeah, that was that was a long time ago. Well, I wasn't even. I don't even know that I was born when like the original originals came out. But I remember yeah, watching them all was... on VHS. You know, when we were, <laughs> when we were like little. But uh, okay. Fine, then I'll go. I'll, I'll do the normal question. So let us uh, let the fans know one non lacrosse related thing uh, to know about you. Um, well, I already said I like to cook. We talked about yep. video games. I love to hike. Like when I travel, that's one of the things I always try to include. Okay. Um, that's right. Good. Like it's like a nice active like rest day, but it's like you can also do some really hard hikes. Probably True. under three hours though is what I try to do. Otherwise, I start getting like tight in my back <laughs> and it's like, yep. just the face off body. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I love to hike. I love to check out views and new areas and like see what's good in different parts of the country. I think that's you know one of the luckiest parts to what, what I get to do so I always like to see things from a little bit different perspective and it, and it reminds you like how lucky we are true I mean have you done any hikes in Arizona no when we went to Arizona we played true north golf which I consider similar like doing something outside right yeah and checking out a that's a nice spot. course too yeah. and it was so sick yeah. yeah like I'm really glad we did it we we're basically in the desert but it, with like beautiful courses it was nuts Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for hopping on. Um, where can people find you on your socials? So I, I just created a YouTube channel. I'm going to be okay. doing product reviews of a bunch of cool companies that I'm, I'm working with and like hopefully I can provide codes for anything. So you guys can get some some cool stuff. Like recently we partnered with Hyperice at discounted prices. Um, and then other than that, Jaynard's on Instagram and Twitter with two S's. I tried to get the, the handle with one S, but I was unsuccessful in securing that. <laughs> and then Face Off Factory on every platform, okay. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and faceofffactory.com. And you can find anything you need to know about us out. Perfect. Well, I mean, small plug for Hyperice. I have one and I they're use, sick. dude, they're sick. They're sick. I thought I, cause I used a Theragun in college and then I got a Hyperice for myself and dude, they're incredible. They're incredible. The best. Yeah, literally the best. Well, thank you again, Joe. I really appreciate your time and uh, have fun on your lesson. Appreciate it, brother. We'll chat soon and I'll see you this season, all right? Perfect. Yeah, see you this season. If you made it here to the end of the video, go ahead and comment down below your favorite part of the interview and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please go hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more Whipsnakes content.